What is up guys? Welcome to our week one team builder for the GBA D League. This week we are taking on the New York Clinks, coached by Papa C. I know him from the uh, NPA, I believe. He's taken on Dan a couple of times. Um, but yeah, we've, uh, we've got our first matchup here. I'm really excited to start this season and uh, hopefully we can start it off with a bang and get a big win. Uh, you guys can see both teams on the right side. The left column is mine and the right column is my opponent's. Uh, you guys should know our team by now after the draft analysis. And uh, his team will go over real quick, of course. He has Hoopa Unbound, Manaphy, Sylveon, Serena, Haxorus, Minior, that's a Mega Pidgeot, Sandslash, Skarmory, Tauros, and Rotom Frost, with Manaphy and Rotom Frost being his Z-Mons. So, pretty straightforward. Um, let's look at our team. So, we'll start off with Enru the Thunderous. I'm running enough speed for um, Max Speed, uh, Timid, or Jolly Base 100s, uh, like his Manaphy, essentially. So, or his Tauros. Uh, I've got Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, Sludge Wave, and Volt Switch. Uh, now, Prankster, because I have no physical moves, of course. Uh, I've got an Expert Belt on there that's really going to help out with the damage against Manaphy. Uh, if it is a Wakan Berry set, which is something that I can see coming, uh, one of my best revenge killers for his Manaphy is going to be this Thunderous. So, uh, Wakan Berry is a very likely set. Uh, Hidden Power is there specifically for the Haxorus. Uh, not much else, maybe to hit the Serena. It has some decent... Um, coverage on switch-ins like into Sand Slash as well, because so, Sludge Wave and the Electric moves obviously don't hit it very hard. Uh, Hidden Power Ice is going to do a lot of damage with the Expert Belt. Uh, we are max special attack, of course, a little bit of an HP and defense as well. And uh, Volt Switch is there specifically because I'll explain everything when we get to a certain Mon, but I need Volt Switch on there to break the, Wak the Wakan Berry. Um, and then I can come back in and Thunderbolt essentially. So it's a it's a pretty straightforward set. I could have run Defiant because he does have things like Trop Kick uh, that can lower my uh, attack and consequently raise my attack uh, and give him the false impression that I might have a physical attack and make him think twice about what he switch in, uh, switches into. Uh, but ultimately, I think I prefer not having uh, Defiant. That way, if I do get hit with the Trop Kick, he has to think that, okay, well, maybe he has Thunder Wave because he's Prankster. So uh, that's something that I want to put into his head. Uh, so that's pretty much Thunderous. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. Next up, we have Ace, the Infernape, uh, named after Port Gizdi Ace from uh, One Piece. Both of these are One Piece characters right here. Uh, and uh, this one's a Scarf set, as you can see, Jolly Blaze. I'm running Jolly once again. Same speed as uh, as Thunderous, uh, just because I need to outspeed Manaphy. Uh, if it does go up to plus one, and if he runs a Scarf Tauros, I'm faster than that. So, um, actually, no, sorry. Tauros is 110, but if he runs Adamant Scarf, then I'm faster than Adamant Scarf. I expect Jolly if he does bring in Scarf, though. Um, U-turn, close combat, mock punch, flare blitz, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, flare blitz is there specifically for Skarmory. Also, it hits pretty, uh, well across his team other than, like, Haxorus and Minior. And Manaphy as well. I don't want to lock myself into flare blitz until Manaphy is gone, essentially, or else I could get heavily set up on, and that is not a good time for me. So, um, flare blitz is saved specifically for the late game. Close combat can do pretty much the same thing, especially, uh, more so against things like, uh, Tauros, Rotom Frost. Uh, the Haxorus specifically, uh, but he does have good resist like Sylveon, so I have to be careful with that as well. U-turn, of course, hits Hoop Unbound four times effective, so it's a nice pivoting move. Um, U-turning out and just getting into a better matchup against anything on his team, realistically. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Mock Punch is there uh, to revenge his setup sweepers. Things like Manaphy, if it gets out of control and it gets low. Uh, things like Haxorus, Minior specifically, that thing, if it comes, is a threat. And I need something to revenge it. If it gets up to plus two, plus two, plus two with a Shell Smash, uh, then I can't come in close combat because it's faster than me, even though I'm Choice Scarfed. So uh, that's something I'm going to have to watch out for. But Mock Punch is a nice revenging move. Of course, just like I said, Scarf Tauros, if that does come, then I can Mock Punch it as well. So it's, it's very nice. I did want to go adamant, but I can't risk it with Manaphy around. I just can't. I can't do it. So uh, at least this way I'm faster than a plus, plus one Haxorus, plus one Manaphy if he gets up a Z Rain Dance. Uh, and that's something we're going to touch on really quickly. Uh, w w really soon, excuse me, not really quickly. But uh, yeah, moving on to the next one, we've got Quillfish, Bakugo. Uh, this is an interesting set. So as you can see, his, um, uh, his team is actually quite weak to Toxic Spikes. Uh, specifically Manaphy if it's not carrying Rain Dance, it chips away at Hoopa, Sylveon if it doesn't have Heal Bell, uh, Serena, uh, I get up Toxic Spice, and even if it comes and spins, it gets poisoned, so that's great. Uh, Haxorus, I need to wear that thing down. 
uh, Minior uh, doesn't get affected, and Mega Pidgeot doesn't get affected, as well as Skarmory. Everything else, uh, and Rotom, excuse me, everything else is hit by Toxic Spike, so uh, that's really nice. Uh, Taunt is there for the Skarmory. If it's a lead matchup of Quillfish versus Skarmory, I didn't mention, but I am Focus Sash, of course, and Intimidate, uh, and Jolly, so we'll get into the speed in a second, but uh, I get to uh, Taunt the Skarmory, prevent it from getting up any hazards. Uh, I do have Hazard Removal if it comes down to it, but I'd rather them not go up in the first place. Poison Jab is able to hit Sylveon and Serena pretty hard, as well as Haxorus. Uh, it doesn't hit uh, Minior or uh, Sandslash too hard, but it can hit uh, Pidgeot pretty hard as well. So all of those things. And Felstinger is there for the Hoopa matchups. So let's say he brings Scarfed Hoopa. If, uh, if we lead off against each other, the roll is actually 90 to 105. So I do have a chance to kill Hoopa immediately right out the gate. And I do get off an Intimidate. So if it's Scarfed Physical, it's not going to do much damage to me. And if it's Scarfed Special, it is not a threat to me at all, guys. It is not a threat to my team in the slightest. So Scarf Physical is the only thing I'm really worried about. Or if he brings Sub, sub Focus Punch. Sub Focus Punch is a huge threat. But I am faster than a Max Speed Hoopa because... Um, Quillfish does hit base 85 speed, and Hoopa is base 80, so that means that I outspeed, uh, Sylveon, I outspeed a slower Manaphy, I outspeed, so I can taunt it, uh, potentially, prevent it from Calm Minding or, or Tail Glowing or anything of the sort. Uh, so I'm faster than Hoopa Unbound unless it's Scarfed, slower Manaphy, Sylveon, Serena, um, I'm faster than Skarmory even at max speed, faster than most Rotoms, so, uh, this is a very nice speed tier to hit, and, um... Of course, like I said, Taunt, T-Spikes, pretty self-explanatory. If I can prevent Sylveon from wishing as well, or Serena from going for Aromatherapy to heal up the team if everything gets toxic, uh, that's really nice. If I am if I happen to be faster than Haxorus for whatever reason, uh, and I taunt it and prevent, uh, prevent it from Dragon Dancing up, that's even better. So uh, the Intimidate is there specifically, obviously, for his physical attackers, things like Tauros, uh, Haxorus, uh, potentially the Hoopa. Serena, this thing comes in really easily on Serena, essentially, so, and it gets back up a Toxic Spike if he, if he manages to wrap it, spin it away. So, uh, very simple set, uh, but it does a lot of work, and the Focus Sash can come in clutch, uh, at some point in the game, so, that's, uh, Bakugo. Moving on to Alphonse, the Metagross. We've got, uh, a Adamant. I'm actually gonna bring up the exact set, uh, with the EVs. We've got 140 HP, uh, 212 Adamant in attack. Uh, 12 defense, 116 spadef, and 28 speed. The speed is probably the most important thing that you guys want to know. This is enough for 24 speed Skarmory if he's trying to speed creep a no speed Metagross. 8 speed Serena if those just happen to be EVs that he can throw into speed. And it also outspeeds 100 speed Sylveon. I should probably get my phone off of my desk. So that you guys can't hear it. Um, so I also outspeed 100 speed Sylveon if for whatever reason he's running enough speed to speed creep a certain Metagross. Uh, and I can hit all of those with Meteor Mash and or Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch is also there, of course, for the Minior, uh, even though Meteor Mash hits it harder, uh, for the Mega Pidgeot and the Manaphy. So I can hit all of those pretty hard. Uh, the Skarmory as well, excuse me, I don't think I mentioned the Skarmory, but uh, this coverage specifically, outside of Sand Slash, can essentially hit his entire team really hard. Um... Haxorus can't really set up on me like it's gonna have a hard time setting up because Meteor Mash is gonna do a ton Especially if I have a toxic spike up and that's why toxic spikes are so important in conjunction with stealth rocks Which of course you see on this Metagross set uh, now the reason that I'm running a lot of HP and spadef uh, Outside of the fact that I'm running a lot of attack a ton of attack um, Is that I want to be able to set up a light screen that you see in the third position uh, And that helps out the rest of the team enormously a lot of his bigger threats are special uh, like his Hoopa his Hoopa, if it is special, but not Scarfed, if it's like mixed, I get to block some of its special attacks like Dark Pulse, Focus Blast, potentially, uh, things of that sort. Manaphy gets weakened, its attacks get weakened. Sylveon can't do anything, uh, even with Shadow Ball. Like, it can't hit me very hard because I have 140 HP and 116 Spadef, so um, Shadow Ball is going to be doing nothing after the light screen, and I should, in theory, outspeed Sylveon. Uh, and then, of course, there's Mega Pidgeot, which is one of the biggest threats to this team. As you can see so far, we haven't really had really great checks to it. Bakugo is not great. Neither is uh, Ace. Uh, and Thunderous can only take so many hits. So, like, it can switch in on a Hurricane, but is it really going to take the HP Ice after? Probably not. And HP Ice is probably coming specifically for Salamence. I could see that. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, that is the uh, Metagross Alphonse. I didn't mention the nickname, but that is our nickname. And I have a lot of, t of attack on there just to make sure that I can hit Sylveon super hard. I can two-hit KO pretty much every max HP Manaphy, as long as it's not defensive. 
just max HP, I can 2 hit KO it with Thunder Punch. So, uh, and I can do a lot of damage to a non-physically defensive Skarmory. Uh, I could see him bringing specially defensive Skarmory, uh, Skarmory because physical, uh, while it deals with Salamence, it doesn't deal with Salamence's Fire Blast, and I can get free Moxie boosts off of it if I happen to Fire Blast it after it takes a little bit of damage to break the Sturdy. So I could see especially defensive Skarmory coming, specifically for that reason. So uh, pretty self-explanatory. Everything checks out here, uh, and Clear Body is the ability, of course, so I can get my attack dropped by Serena, which is nice. Next up, we have Blair. This is supposed to be yellow. It's not supposed to be shiny. From now on, it's not going to be shiny, but... Um, we do have Blair the Umbreon. Uh, it's supposed to be based on Blair from uh, Soul Eater, the cat. Uh, I know this is not a cat. Don't don't roast me, guys. Uh, but we are careful. Uh, synchronized leftovers. Uh, the EV spread is 252 HP, uh, 12 defense, and 244 uh, special defense. So this is pretty much my special wall. It's able to deal with a lot of his powerful special attackers like Hoopa specifically. Uh, if it doesn't run special, Focus Blast actually doesn't do too much. I can definitely take one, uh, protect and then wish and protect and so on and so forth. Uh, Mega Pidgeot is the big one uh, here is that I have no other switch to Mega Pidgeot. I just explained that. Um, this is pretty much the only thing that can deal with it. So as long as I don't get confused, I should be okay. I should be able to wish and protect and fire off foul plays and weaken his Mega Pidgeot and we'll be okay. But um, in general, it's a pretty big threat. So uh, I definitely have to have some sort of response to it. And Umbreon is pretty much the only thing I have. Uh, foul play, of course, hits Hoopa pretty hard. Uh, hits Haxorus really hard if it tries to set up on me. Minior especially. Minior is one of the biggest ones. Uh, that's also a huge threat. His flying types are huge threats to my team. Like, I don't have very good flying resists. If you look at my team on the left side, uh, it's really only Metagross. And in general, most flying types get something to hit uh, Metagross. In Mega Pidgeot's case, it's uh, Heat Wave. And in Minior's case, it's Earthquake. So I did consider running a Shooka Berry on Metagross. But I felt like uh, Leftovers in the long term would be better because I can handle Minior to some extent. Uh, as well as Haxorus, so that's pretty much it. Umbreon also, its final function is to not only gain momentum with Baton Pass, but one of the big sets that I'm fearing from Papa C uh, and his Manaphy specifically is Z Rain Dance, Tail Glow, Surf, Energy Ball. Look at my team and look at that set. It shreds me. It, it absolutely destroys me. Like, yes, it can't hit Decidueye, but he could have Ice Beam. Um, if he has Ice Beam over Energy Ball, yes, he can hit Blastoise, but what if he has Energy Ball? Like, I can't, I can't play around with that set. That set is a, is a monstrosity to my team. Uh, and if I just so happen not to bring Decidueye or, um, or Salamence, he can just run through me. And, and Salamence, I think, dies to a plus three Surf in the rain, um, after Rocks. So, yeah, um, I definitely do not want to mess around with Manaphy. So, the way that I'm going to be dealing with it is... I'm slower than Manaphy, right? Always. Um, no matter what Manaphy does, it cannot outslow me. So he'll go first. If I see Calm Mind, I can go into Thunderous and deal with it decently well. Volt Switch out, uh, maybe go into Metagross if he happens to be slower. If I see Calm Mind, I'm expecting a slightly slower variant, so I can maybe go into Quillfish, preventing, uh, preventing him from setting up more Calm Minds, go back into Thunderous after Quillfish goes down, Thunderbolt it. Uh, however, if I see... Z Rain Dance before I click Baton Pass, and I will always click Baton Pass on Manaphy. I will never click anything but Baton Pass on Manaphy. I will not click Wish, I will not cl click Foul Play, I will not click Protect. I need to get out, and I need to know what it's doing. So I click Baton Pass. If he goes for Z Rain Dance, we switch out into our final mon on the team, Gamagori, the Mega Blastoise, which this week, uh, it's a very tailored set to his team. Uh, I have 36 EVs in special attack with a modest nature, which gives me just enough special attack to Oko a no HP uh, Pidgeot, Mega Pidgeot, after rocks. It also allows me to have a 93% chance to Oko a non HP invested Haxorus after rocks. If he has HP, the T spike will take care of the rest. Uh, the physical defense is for his physical attack attackers like Haxorus and potentially Hoopa. If it's not banded, obviously, I can take its hits. If it's banded, it's a little bit worse. Scald spreading um, burns across what can't be poisoned is very nice. Uh, specifically, Skarmory, Rotom Frost, uh, Minior doesn't want to take a Scald, and Mega Pidgeot doesn't want to take it either, especially not into Ice Beam. But the reason, that, the real reason I'm bringing this, as I said before, is because if Manaphy goes for Z-Rain Dance, it cannot do damage to my Blastoise with an Energy Ball. Like, it's going to do a little bit, but not enough to 
to put Blastoise completely out of commission. So he gets up a Z Rain Dance. The last thing I want him doing is getting up a Z Rain Dance alongside a Tail Glow. I get in there, I roar out that Manaphy. It's no longer a problem for the rest of the game. I have Ace, the Infernape, to outspeed it with its Choice Scarf, knock it down with a close combat. Or I have Thunderous. Like I said before, if it's a Wakanberry set, I break the Wakanberry by Volt Switching out, sacking something like Quillfish or Blastoise if it gets too low, and then going back into Thunderous and knocking it out with a Thunderbolt. So, Manaphy is not going to be doing anything in this game. I promise you that. It doesn't set up on anything, anything essentially. Unless uh, Infernape is locked into Flare Blitz, or if um, Quillfish's Sash is broken and he's faster than me, I believe. That's the only way that he can set up on me because Thunder Punch is going to do too much. I can set up a light screen, go into Umbreon. Um, I can wish, protect, foul play, wear down the Manaphy uh, as long as he's not rest. But if he's running only water moves, like eventually I'll, I'll figure it out and I'll go into Blastoise and just roar him out. So it's not that big a deal. Um, so I can pretty much handle any Manaphy at this point. Uh, I did not want to lock myself into any one move with Thunderous, so that's why it's Expert Belt. Uh, you guys know how much I detest Life Orb in League format when you can be running something like Expert Belt and specifically tailor your EVs to be able to knock out what you want to knock out. Like Life Orb, yes, in some cases it's very good, but look at the coverage that I have and look at his team. Like, there's nothing that I want to hit for extra power that I'm not already hitting super effectively. So Belt is probably the best thing you could go with. There's also Wise Glasses as an option. Uh, on this set, I could have run Magnet to increase the uh, the power of my electric moves for things like his Hoopa, his Sylveon switch in, and whatnot. But uh, I much prefer Expert Belt in this specific matchup. You guys are going to see me run uh, other items. And I could even run Life Orb. Like, Life Orb is not off the table completely. I've considered running Life Orb Salamence in the past um, on different teams, not on my GBAD League team. But uh, this is pretty much the team, guys. As you can see, we got Enaru, Ace, Bakugo. Uh, Alphonse, Blair, and Gamagori. If you guys know where these nicknames are from, make sure to comment down below, let me know. Uh, and uh, also, the link to my opponent's channel will be in the description down below, as, long as, as well as the link to the GBA channel, the GBA Twitter, pretty much everything GBA related. Uh, and every week my opponent's uh, links will be there, so make sure to go and check them out every single week to, make, to see what they brought. Uh, see what uh, what their matchup looks like what their thought process was and if you want to go check out their side of the battle too as well as mine Awesome, but yeah guys, that's pretty much it if you did enjoy this team builder if you want to see more of these um, Actually, the seeing as this is the first one. This is probably the best place to ask it Let me know if you want to see the team builder combined with the actual battle itself or if you want to see them separately uh, Normally, they're supposed to be separately and I think that's how we're going to continue to function in the GBA uh, but seeing as how I'm there I'm going to try to put in a word to see if we can have them combined into one video. Obviously, two is always better, just for the content creator themselves. But um, but let me know what you guys prefer personally. Uh, also, for future videos for things outside of the D-League, um, I'll, I'll try to, to conform to... Uh, what you guys prefer if you guys if I see that a vast majority prefers for the team builder to be included within the actual uh, Battle video itself, then I'll move toward that um, I can substitute th that content with something else. So that's that's not a big deal for me personally But yeah, let me know guys also make sure to leave a like down below for me if you did enjoy subscribe if you haven't already and uh, Make sure to catch the battle tomorrow guys. It's gonna be our very first Wi-Fi battle on the channel. So hype and uh, Yeah, catch you guys later. Ciao